Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Based upon this philosophy by Mr. Nelson Mandela, I, Mahesh Mehta, Head Retail Forex, welcome you all to the first edition of Access Bank Horizon, a journey towards your dream. With an increase in concept of global village or globalization, one of the important aspect is people movement from one country to another, be it for business, job, travel or education. Exposure to international market adds value to overall personality of an individual. As we have seen in past, study abroad as a concept is growing rapidly. This gives global exposure to students as well as opens door for multiple opportunities. Today, we have gathered here to discuss this in detail. To join us in this discussion, we have our eminent guests with us. They are the industry experts and they have been in this industry for last many years. They're going to share their expert comments on various aspects related to study abroad. Let me introduce our first guest, Mr. Jasmeet Singh Bhatia, Director, Landmark Immigration. Welcome all to this session. We'll try to cover the pertinent questions which comes in our mind when we think of traveling abroad for further studies. If you look at the current numbers, as per the recent market study, Currently, 8 lakh students are studying abroad. I think this number will go up to 2 million by 2024. Jasmeet, I just want to understand what are the advantage and the opportunities available for the students, those who are thinking to study abroad? Yes, this is a burning question in every student's mind these days. So I feel as the international education is getting affordable day by day, so there are many options for students to study ab abroad and acquire these skills. So students, by studying abroad, they will learn different ways of life. It will make them more tolerant to the new cultures in internationally. And I feel they will learn so many things which will help them grow internationally. So while working here or in abroad, it will be beneficial for them. Thank you very much. So as we all know, UK and US are the primary destination selected by students. However, with the development happening across the world, there are many other emerging destinations which has come up across in the last few years. What are the preferred destinations as well as what are the destinations which has emerged in the last few years? And during these past three years, even in 2020, 21 and 22, Canada has been taking students regularly. And residency options are the best for Canada as we all know. Previously, there was like three states students were going abroad like Punjab, Gujarat and Kerala were the most uh, popular for Canadian options. But now it is seen that other states also where like Maharashtra has good number of students going to Canada and other states as well are now looking at Canada as option. So I think apart from US and UK, the Canadian market is one of the largest market. And after that, as you said, uh, Germany and uh, France. France. Has yeah. They are growing, they are growing. And Germany is growing very fast. Okay. Yes. Okay. So journey to study abroad has a screening process and all these universities have their own set process for selection of the students. My question to you is, uh, what are the examination which students need to prepare for when they're planning to go abroad for further studies? The most case? popular one is IELTS, okay. which is being accepted by Canada, US, UK, Australia and New Zealand. So if anybody is looking to study abroad, if anyone is looking to study abroad, first test, they have to clear their English exam. So PTE is also a second test, which is also accepted by Canada and Australia, even UK. So some institutes are accepting that. But the most acceptable one right now in the market is IELTS test. So how much time it takes uh, for the screening process basically? So it depends on a student to student that how much time they will take. Some students don't even need training. You know, they go and give their test and they pass. But some students may take months to clear those tests. Okay. These are certified trainings modules. So it's an unconventional way of doing training right now. So they do. If you say that there is a certification kind of a opening a training center, there is not. But there's a lot of material on YouTube. There's a lot of material online. There is a lot of material being offered by these English testing centers. So if students, if they are capable enough, they don't need to go to training center. Yeah, and if they need training centers, then there are a lot of training centers come up. And those training centers, like where we do or in other in part in our part of the country, so every week there's a test. You know, every Saturday is kind of a test to test the ability of the student. 
so if the student is doing good in those tests he can definitely pass the actual test so as a student consultants uh, you all also conduct these training sessions definitely we also have this is like a, we all are offering a complete package kind of a thing so if a student walks into us and tells us that he need guidance for training yes they, then we they give them die guidance for training so they need to know what is the cost of study abroad then we guide them this will be the cost of study abroad and then they want to know about the country like which country is suitable to them so that also depends on the affordability of the student like what is his tuition fees requirement what what he can pay so then he we can decide the country and then also if he's not able to get like example canada is having 6 each as base requirement if you don't have 6 each then you cannot apply to canada so if he doesn't he's not able to get that 6 each band requirement then he can do a test at lower levels also and then go into some other country like uk so right now uk has a less band requirement so these trainings are specific to countries as well as to the courses right no so there is a benchmark there is a benchmark of each country so canada has a policy so canada immigration policy is like that which has been a very strong and stable policy because it's been like 15 years canada has introduced some programs like previously it was a student partners program which was called spp then they came up with sds student direct stream program so that immigration of canada has made these policies that if a student has these many bands then they can go to canada to study you know but in some cases australia it's totally different the universities decide that student is eligible to come to the country or not so every country has different immigration policies every country has a different immigration process every country has different interview process if you tell me canada takes interviews very less like out 1% not even 1% and if you tell me australia takes interview embassy is not taking interview but universities do take interviews and in case of uk also this is the same scenario and for you us say if you tell every student has to go for a face to face interview in the high commission without that they are not eligible to get any kind of visa so every country has a different panel selection for giving them visas okay i think this was insightful i think this will help our viewers so apart from these examination what are the other factors one need to take care so if you can just elaborate so the, the most important factor is the ranking of the university or the college so students should look at which university or which college he is going into another part is safety safety is major concern for parents you know so will their student kids will be safe in other countries other part of the world they will be safe so safety is is the major concern which every parents come to us and ask about us you know and then environmental issues so will they will be affected by the environment in that country what is the climatic condition where the student is going to so what are the language barriers when they will be studying in that country like we were discussing like germany most of the public institutes don't teach in english most of the public institutes don't teach in english so if you want to go to germany then in a public institute you need to learn german language and in canada most of the institutes teach in english so ca- canada english is their primary language whereas second language if you tell them is french so some of the universities or colleges in canada also teach in french so there can be some language barriers when student is deciding to go abroad and if you tell me germany if student is looking at studying in english language then they need to choose a private university so they cannot go to public university if they are looking at studying in you know in english so they are very very less even not even 1% of the public universities are teaching in english so i feel the most important factors is ranking then you know affordability tuition fees the environment the language barriers and safety so i feel these are the few important factors which will affect the students and they need to take these in their consideration one of the important factor which comes in student or parents mind is how to establish that the university or the college and the course you have chosen for is recognized in the most important role is the consultant you know so if you don't choose the right consultant then you don't go to the right university or the college so the consultant sometimes see that i would make more money in this college or university i should send maybe it's private maybe it doesn't have any rank you know maybe it is not offering quality infrastructure 
so this happened with few of the colleges in past few years but the students should look at choosing the right consultant they should look at how many years of experience the consultant is having they should look at the consultant has visited himself the universities or colleges or not you know so you go to a consultant who's not never gone to canada who's never seen us who's never been to germany whereas all of us sitting here we do not miss you know any conference which is happening abroad you know so we have like a major conference association it's called the icef you know so they do these conferences in across the globe so we all of all of us you know sitting here we go to canada we go to usa we go to germany and attend those conferences we meet the college representatives find out we actually find out what are they offering and our major concern is the student safety and their tuition fees so there are some scrupulous you know uh, colleges also which run away with the tuition fees you know so student needs to be very very careful about tuition fees and choosing the right consultant once the admission process is complete mm -hmm. so the important aspect is now processing of visa so as per my understanding if the student is availing the education loan that helps in processing of visa right so can you please elaborate a bit more in this but i feel uh, generally the visa timing is 3 to 4 months okay generally if you talk to us uh, tell us ki what will be what will the time take a messi will take but right now if you tell me canada high commission is coming to 30 to 45 days for good profile students as manish added like it depends on the profile to profile so for a good profile right now we have seen some results coming 30 to 45 days Okay. previously it was extended up to 180 days like it was taking 6 months during covid due to the pendency of files so right now also high commission has i feel so 4 to 5 lakhs student application visas under process in canada and if you tell me about usa so it depends on the usa interview appointment so right now embassy is giving appointments for after 8 months so if you tell me usa they will have to appear for an interview appointment if they have to get the visa so it all depends on the high commissions every high commission has a different pattern of processing and if you tell me education loan also depends so if you are going to canada then you need to get that money dispersed before you avail the visa so okay. you need to pay the tuition fees you need to pay the gic before you lodge your file in the high commission but for australia for new zealand you don't need to do that you can put your sanction letter as you said you you can use that sanction letter as your proof of funds but how you have taken that education loan that will be also verified by australia and new zealand high commission and for us also they you don't need to pay any tuition fees you don't need to pay any living funds you know living cost to any bank you just need to have proof of funds you go to embassy take an interview take your visa and even after you get your visa stamped on your passport in usa then you can pay your tuition fees so you mean to say different countries have different visa each process each country has a different processing time each country has a different financial uh, aspect each country follows a different timelines so jasmeet as you mentioned a uh, good profile so what do you mean to say good profile is it like score or the or any other factor so see good profiles by mean like their percentage their C okay. cgpa their average score in the individual subjects you know so canada right now if you tell me their basic requirement is 6 each right 6 each ielts you have ielts 6 each you come under sds stream but there are like more than 200000 applications with 6 each so they will be monitoring who is having seven bands who's having eight bands in ielts and then the percentage also matters if you are a 90% student and you have some scholarship from a university and then you have seven bands and then you have paid your full year tuition fees you have paid your gic which is guaranteed investment certificate and then if you've done everything then your visa can be processed in 15 days and suppose you are an average student you have lower marks your percentage is 55% and your band is also 6 each that means you are a mediocre profile then they will take that profile they will keep it aside and they will process the better profiles before not in the high commission case even the universities and colleges also have started doing this ranking system 
So if a student is a good profile candidate, like a high percentage, high IELTS score, then he will get admission first than an average profile. Okay, you mentioned GIC twice uh, in this conversation. To my understanding, few of these uh, countries uh, they require student to invest in some fund, uh, which is as guarantee, right? Which is GIC, I suppose. So if you can just elaborate a bit more, uh, what is GIC? and what all countries uh, this GIC is applicable? Yes, sure. So GIC is Guaranteed Investment Certificate, which is used as proof of funds for your living cost okay. in Canada. So it is actually this term is used by Canadian High Commission only, not applicable to other countries, but the only second country which has started using this thing is Germany, which is which they have termed this as blocked account. Canada needs $10,000, which if a student has $10,000, that means he can sustain his living cost in Canada. So he can use that fund monthly, he can withdraw some amount. Initially, when he visits Canada, he reaches Canada, then he can withdraw $2,000. But after that, he can withdraw equal installments monthly, which can be used for his living cost. For Germany, they need 11,000 euros. So okay. that's for Germany and they call it blocked account. But I feel GIC is very, very simplified process. All other countries should also follow because once the student has paid to a Canadian bank, it means they have to pay it before getting their visa processed. Okay. So like other countries, Australia and New Zealand, they need a bank statement. They need education loan. They need your sponsor to show those funds and then you get visa. I feel GIC or a blocked account is a simplified procedure to show your living cost. Thanks, Jasmeet. Uh, so, Manish, uh, uh, as we were talking about the screening process and the examinations, so once the screening process is done and the examination uh, process is over, uh, one of the important questions comes in our mind is which course to be opted for. So, uh, you know, just with your experience and knowledge, uh, can you please elaborate a bit more on uh, what are the courses available in different universities abroad? Doing an MBA is quite affordable in Canada. So it can be at the same price what we do an MBA in India too. So oh. that is the affordability right now. And if we compare, like both of them said that there are a lot of options. So there are a lot of trades which students can look at while they're moving abroad. Because if you tell me electrician might be, we call it the electrician in India. But electrician is getting the maximum payouts in Canada and abroad, you know. Doing a welding course can give you a lot of money. Not being a white collar job, not being in white collar job, you can make more money doing the trades. So trades play a very, very important role. Like if you tell me you are a mechanical engineer, you are an automobile engineer, you are a civil engineer, you are a construction management. And in Canada specifically, if you do a two years diploma, for a trade, then you can get a very, very high paying salary also. So there is a lot of mix of courses. If you are from an arts background, you can do hospitality, you can do event management, you can do journalism, you can do early childhood education. You're from a medical background, you can do nursing, you can do a social service worker diploma, you can do fitness and health promotion, you can do massage therapy. And if you are from a commerce background, so commerce is the least options, you know, yeah. because he can do a business course only. He can do a BBA or a business course only, but he also has a specialize in, specialization in sales, marketing, finance, international business, he can choose from. So do, to do trades or IT, you need to have maths. As we are discussing about the post-graduation, right? There are undergraduation courses as well. So what are the prominent undergraduation courses? VBA is one of the very popular undergraduate course, which a commerce background or from like who's done accountancy and a business course. We can, they can do a BBA, BCom or an IT, you know, BTEC in computer sciences is the most popular one. So if anybody is from a maths and science background, he's looking at BTEC computer science is the very, very high demand course. And to get seats in BTEC computer science is difficult in a good university too. So you have to plan one year before if you are looking at in a high admission in a high demand course. And the, if for a medical student, nursing is a very, very high demand. If you're looking at BSc nursing, then you can wait up to two years to get into a university because those BSc nursing, they want local students primarily 
and for international students they keep very very less allocation of seats so nursing is also very very in high demand course to study abroad and then we talk about this art students and they can also do like bachelors in political science bachelors in psychology by bachelors in sociology bachelors in english bachelors in journalism so for an arts background student they also have lot of options to do bachelors in media communications or animation is another field which is coming up very very well and students were looking at interior designing fashion designing so these kind of courses are also available so if you're looking at something in film production also there are also courses available in all the countries so you mean to say uh, the options uh, are equal in both postgraduate as well yes, as the undergraduate yes, yes. program so it is beneficial for students to go at early stage because they will be able to adapt the culture they will be able to adapt the environment of that country and if their plan is to settle down in that country then it will be very very beneficial for them uh, how is this placement works there in all these universities uh, what are the uh, what percentage of the student gets the placement is it like it must be definitely depends upon the category of the college Uh, you are into yeah. uh, one and second thing is uh, uh, what is the situation of getting pr after the education so oh, just me you want to add something what so make us mention definitely see the major concern of each parent is that their ward should get a good job they should make a good career in their life you know but it definitely depends on the ranking of the institute or the college or the university student went to So if you tell me if they are going into a top ranked university in any of the country they will get placed earlier but there is a scarcity of labor right now even qualified labor or unqualified labor all across the world if you tell me about germany they have 1.5 million jobs vacant right now and those can be only filled if they take lot of immigration or they take lot of students and if you talk about canada in next 2 3 years they have 1.1 million jobs vacant and the by the end of 2040 most of their government jobs will be vacant and the, all the employees will be retiring because of the age factor so canada can only survive if they take lot of immigrants so like sumit said next 3 years they have a plan to take 1.5 million immigrants to make them citizens or permanent residents of canada that can be only achieved if they will be giving pr to the local students as well as international students who are coming there and with the immigration policies so canada has made i think so their immigration policies for next 30 years because their economy is dependent on immigrants so getting placed is very very easy across the globe if you tell me canada or australia or new zealand but and uk but in usa you will be placed if you are going to a good university because usa uh, has a population of close to 30 crores more than 30 crores whereas canada has a population of 3 and a half crores so it also depends the population of size of the country so uh, usa is already a developed country whereas i feel canada there's lot of scope of development if you compare the land size of canada is equal as us but if you compare their population is just 1/10th of us population so canada size is 3 times bigger than india so we have a population of 130 crores you know and you canada is at 3 and a half crores so then we can see that anybody going to canada will be absorbed by canada until and unless you don't do any criminal activity you don't follow any rules and regulation of that country or you don't study so thank you very much sumit uh... Jasmeet and Manish, I think this was insightful for our viewers. Uh, so now I, I would like to highlight one of the important uh, aspect when we are talking about uh, a journey towards uh, studying abroad. So Jasmeet, if you go back in maybe 2010 or 2012, I think at that point of time, a student going abroad for higher studies uh, were limited. Uh, maybe because of the affordability or the expenses were a bit higher or uh, because nowadays if you have seen in last past 5 6 years uh, the number has gone up and it is rapidly growing year on year and uh, uh, maybe because of the uh, because of the visibility and there are many financial institutions are providing the education loan uh, access bank is one of the 
a major player who provides the education loan uh, in a very affordable rate of interest certainly the education loan have become more accessible so education loan is more accessible to people even education loan is being offered without collateral we have seen that and students are getting availing those services and paying their tuition fees from the education loan and going abroad and i know that education loan has a very very flexible repayment plan also which they can pass their studies and then pay off but in case of all the countries if you talk about canada us uk or germany students are allowed to work part time along with their study so if they are putting in 20 hours of study they can work part time so they can work 20 hours part time also so they make money there also and sometimes they don't even need to touch the gic account so some students don't even use the living cost which has been already transferred to canada you know so or even in the case of us uk new zealand or australia they don't even use the funds available for them for the living cost because they are making the money what they are getting from their part time jobs and some students tend to make from $1200 to $1500 a month so that is sufficient for them to use for their hostel accommodation to use for their insurances to use for their food so that is a big amount so they don't not need, need not worry about sometimes to pay for their next year tuition fees also so they save the gic account or they save the living cost account to pay their next year tuition fees so students are primarily becoming more you know intelligent in case of money managing i have seen students who are like 23 years old 24 years old even buying a house and a car in other countries you know whereas in india buying a house at a age of 40 we feel it is a blessing you know so this is some this is the biggest difference which you feel when you go abroad and being so us and uk we were discussing that preferably they were very very you know highlighted countries and everybody wanted to get settled in us and uk but they were not good settlement options whereas countries like canada australia new zealand they offered good settlement options students invested money you know parents invested money and in return they came back from us and uk and they did not get what they expected they did not got good jobs in india you know and then the students who went to canada and australia 10 12 years ago and they are well settled they are even their families and even made a big home in india also yeah. so when you compare that kind of you know draw a line come do a comparison so these countries did outshined from those preferred destinations and all over india now they're moving to places where they feel they can get settled and they can get a safer place their health health is free in many of the countries once you are permanent resident health is free your children's education is free you know so these are the major factors which makes it which makes it very very attractive to go abroad and study sometimes settle sometimes mm. come back and use your exposure thank you jasmeet for taking out your valuable time with us and helping us understand the on ground realities related to traveling abroad for studies and to all our viewers i would like to extend our heartiest greetings we sincerely hope the session was informative and helpful to each one of you i would like to mention that access bank with dilsi open philosophy is here for you we will be happy to help you in this journey towards your dream of studying abroad access bank offers wide variety of services like education loan forex card remittances and travel insurance which will make your journey abroad for education much easier you can visit our website www.accessbank.com and go to access bank horizon page which is one stop solution for all your education related offerings you may also get in touch with your relationship manager or visit our nearest access bank branch to know more about these services with this i close this session see you in the next episode of access bank horizon till then goodbye all the best